this high school has. But um, yeah, everything's come together. You know how school works sometimes. It just in the nick of time, but I am very proud of how the students have worked together and just accomplished what I've set before them. And yeah, so anyway, I think we'll get started with that. Um, first up will be the first and second graders.
Wow, that was awesome. We really threw a curveball at you right there. And we're about to throw another one because we're transitioning to Handel's Messiah now. <laughs> so what a fun evening. Uh, thank you. This so far has been first through fourth grade. And they've, um, uh, they're have they a real choir around school. And so if you stick around for about, uh, let's see, eight, ten years, it's going to be pretty amazing. Are you guys staying up here for anything more? Or are you guys just? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. You're staying up here for that. All right, so um, I just want to make a few comments before we, um, in 7th and 8th, 5th, 6th, you all go ahead and find your places up here. I'll talk while you guys are coming. Uh, once again, Mrs. Kurtz has done a great job putting together a program, and it is literally a mixture. If you look through your program, uh, you're going to see we're going to kind of go all over the place, um, and I'm in the way. But we have some... Um, we have quite a selection coming even after intermission, and I like the flavor that um, the different genres of music uh, uh, bring to, to an event like this. But we are literally uh, moving into something we've, we, uh, did we try this maybe once at a Christmas program? We did maybe one or two songs last year, I think. But I was visiting a school and they said, you know, there's Handel's Messiah for kids. And if you know anything about Handel's Messiah, it is, I, I wrote down a few facts here about it. It's 259 page oratorio written by George Friedrich Handel. And it's an amazing piece. It was first performed 280 years ago this April. And so, the, this is obviously going to be kind of a children's rendition of it, but if you enjoy Handel's, Handel's music, uh, you'll definitely kind of get that flavor here tonight. We don't have an orchestra pit, so this music is going to come to you canned. Uh, maybe in years to come, we could have uh, some uh, strings playing as well. But these kids have worked really hard on these songs, and they're not necessarily as fun to sing as maybe that last one was. So that really stretches teachers to get uh, children to buy into a song that's gonna, that has a, a different level of difficulty to it. And I just wanna say, good job, Ms. Kurtz. Ms. Stolzfus, you jumped in on that. And homeroom teachers practice this stuff a lot in their homerooms. And I also wanna give a shout out to Ms. Rempel. I, I get to hear classes when they warm up singing in the morning. Her class for years now, uh, that's just part of your routine in the morning, and we can hear it. And so, good job. Keep that up. Um, but um, this ne these next couple pieces, uh, We Like Sheep, and uh, Worthy is the Lamb, and then Hallelujah. Uh, Handel wrote his piece. In 24 days, he wrote 259 pages of music. In 24 days, he was a German, hard-working German. And it all of a sudden came to him, uh, this oratorio that he was writing. And if you do the math on that, that's a quarter million notes in 24 days. Uh, he's writing 15 notes per minute. And he barely stopped over these 24 days. And then when he came to the song, and you've heard it before, the Hallelujah Chorus that he put together. This is what he said. He told one of his uh, servants that were helping him at the house, he said, I did think, I did see all of heaven before me and the great God himself seated on the throne with his company of angels. So you're going to hear uh, a different rendition of Hallelujah Chorus. Uh, but there's a little, there's a tradition. It might be folklore. Who knows if it happened or not. Uh, but they claim the king, when he first heard this, George II, uh, that he just overtaken with uh, the wonder of the song and the orchestra piece and the chorus in it, he stood to his feet. Well, uh, good English, you know, you can't let the king be standing and you're sitting. So the congregation or everybody in the concert hall stood to their feet because the king was standing. So that is a tradition with uh, Hallelujah Chorus. 
Uh, there are sitters and standers in Hallelujah Chorus who will let you choose what you want to do tonight when they break into the Hallelujah. And after that, Ash will dismiss us for a short intermission. Don't go get the food yet, okay? Hang tight. Sec part two is going to be awesome. Thanks for coming out. We hope you enjoy the rest of the evening.
I guess, yeah, so now is your time for 10 minute intermi oh, intermission. So you all are free to stretch your legs and go grab a drink. Um, do not grab a snack.
<laughs> it's like <laughs> such a teacher move. All right. Yes, find your seats, and then we'll get started with the rest of the evening. So we'll start with fifth and sixth, and then work our way up from there.
When I wake up, yeah, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the one who wakes up next to you. When I go out, yeah, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to be the one who goes along with you.
when I'm working. Yes, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the one who's working hard for you. And when the money comes in for the work I do, I'll pass almost every penny on to you.
the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy I must be. Jesus curse yourself last and others in me. I've got the joy, 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 joy I must be. Jesus curse yourself last and others in me. And I'm so happy.
I saw the light fade from the sky On the wind I heard a sigh As the snowflakes cover my fallen brothers I will say this last goodbye Night is now falling so ends this day. The road is now calling, and I must away over hill and under tree.
think that song was called The Last Goodbye, and I noticed it's arranged by Ashley Kurtz, and it's a good job. And it's I'm sure for you seniors, um, six seniors up here, um, it's kind of uh, a mixed moment for you to be singing your last songs with your classmates, and and there's something about music and the way God created our our hearts to go with it. Uh, I heard a guy, Brandon Mullet, speaking on music, and he said that if a choir sings together long enough, it's said that their hearts will begin to beat together. It's called sympathetic resonance, I think is what he called it. And uh, from a metaphor standpoint, that's really what happens when we when we sing together. And so there are other goodbyes to be said tonight as well. I want to invite Miss Mullet up here and anybody who'd like to from the team who'd like to participate in saying a few things to Miss Mullet. Come on over here, Holly. Lori, you want to grab some stuff there. Um, we, um, at the end of last school year, she was the graduate uh, up here, and um, we went into summer uh, looking for a teacher, and we thought we had a teacher for third and fourth grade, and it didn't work out. And it was June, uh, and I was still looking, and it was July, and I was still looking. And Lori came to me one day, and she said that Holly came and talked to her and said, uh, I don't think she said, put dad out of his misery, I'll do it. Uh, because, uh, but she had already had plans to go into Bible school and uh, to get started with college soon, and she said that she wants to do it, and she'll do it. So I talked to the board, and, you know, uh, a few weeks later, she was ready to go, and I've just been really proud of the job you've done this year, um, the heart you've shown for your students, and also the way um, um, you're, you're choosing something, and you're taking the next step now, and she wants to, uh, well, I shouldn't tell your story. You could, you could say what you want to do with that, but also thank you for that sacrifice for letting go of Bible school. Your dad loved Bible school. I do not think I could have done that, uh, you know, to, to give that up this winter. And uh, the third and fourth grade have just been a joy, and you've done a great job in them. There's some other teachers who want to say a few things, and Kent's here from the board, and he wants to say a few things, and then I'll close it out. Maybe we'll just pass the mic that way. All right. I do best if I read my thoughts, so I'm going to read them to you. Almost a year has passed since I sat down to write your valedictorian welcome. I remember watching you grow into a beautiful young lady in high school. You always had a warm, inviting way with the younger grades in school. When I heard you were going to be the third and fourth grade teacher, I knew that the students would be, well, would be taught well and in a pair of very capable hands. Now here we are, a year later, and you have done an exceptional job with the 17 students. I have watched you care for them with patience and gentleness. Your investment in their heart is evident in how they respond to you. You need only poke your head around a corner and a chorus of voices will chime, teacher alert, teacher alert. Because of your willingness to step into the classroom this last year, you have helped shape the minds of your students. You captured their imagination through story and their minds were grown through your instruction every day. It has been an absolute joy for me to get to work alongside of you. Thank you for all you have brought to school and the staff team. We want to wish you the very best of wishes as you enjoy your summer and then head into college this fall. Well, Holly, um, before you leave this place, I have a few things I'd like you to know. Um, I echo what Cassandra said. It's been a pleasure to work next to you and um, to watch you realize that you actually love to teach as much as you dreamed that you would. Um, that's been in your heart for a while, and it's been really neat to watch you realize that as, as a calling, um, as a desire to serve in that way. Uh, it, it didn't take long, it didn't take many days of school before I could hear the delight in your students' voices when they spoke to you or spoke of you. Um, 
that's a really neat thing. I feel really proud of you, not just your accomplishments, although those are impressive, uh, but I feel really proud of who you are, and you live in such gentleness and grace. Um, you're creative, and you have this wonderful eye for beauty, for capturing beauty and also creating it. Um, I've walked into your classroom many times this year and looked at your bulletin boards and wished that such talent would exist <laughs> in my, uh, in, in me. Um, it's beautiful and it creates a wonderful environment for your, for the kids that you serve. Um, we've actually technically started here at Foothills together two times. Um, back how many years ago when, when the school began, um, <coughs> I was your age and um, you were a second grader, right? And um, I just remember watching you. You were quiet, a little bit shy. Um, you, we, I spent a ton of time at your house. Um, you were around a lot after school. And um, in a lot of ways, I feel like the who you became to me was kind of like a little sister. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why I feel proud of who you are. Um, so then to come back this year together was a gift as well. Um, when, when my siblings became peers to me or felt like friends instead of just the younger siblings, I think that's kind of how um, I would feel like this, this year has felt for me, um, where we were coworkers and peers, not just um, separated by a few years, but got to work together and live together. That was a real treat. Um, you know this, but every time you say goodbye, um, there's sadness. Every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. But I really believe that the yes that you're saying right now to school and to, um, to further your education, to build your knowledge for, for being a good teacher will, um, will come back to you in abundant ways that you can't even see right now that God will use that in your life. Um, so go with God. I love you. Um, I'm kind of totally winging this because I didn't think it through that we would have this chance um, to say some things. But um, I just, first of all, um, I feel like Cassandra and Susanna have already said things about um, how, how well you did with your class this year. But I want to echo that and um, just, just say that I saw you bring a lot of creativity, a lot of fun, um, a lot of excitement and adventure into your class. And that was really fun to see. Um, I... I have so enjoyed working with you. I, I can't even express like how grateful I am that we have gotten to work together this last year. Um, we both came in and were the new kids and didn't really know what we were doing, but uh, figured it out and with, with a lot of help. Um, but you have become a, a little bit like, like Sue was saying, I've known you for a very long time, but I haven't known you on this level until like coming back, moving back, and um, being able to get to know you as an adult and relate to you as an adult and as a friend um, has been kind of the best thing for me um, at school this year. And um, you have, I don't know, listened to me and understood me, and I appreciate that. So I. I know we won't see as much of each other because you won't be here, and that that's a little hard. But um, yeah, don't be a stranger. And I know I'll see you around still. And I wish you the best in your next stage of life. Holly, uh, I just want to say <laughs> thank you so much from the board. Um, I know you like your dad referred to kind of came in last minute and um but you did an excellent job <clears throat> and we really appreciate it and i feel like you you taught with confidence 
um, even without previous teaching experience. Um, and that, that took a lot of courage from you to step in and do that. So uh, we were really grateful for what you did and thankful. And I just want to wish you the best, um, God's blessing on your life as you go from here and transition and go to college and maybe you'll come back and teach here again. Thank you. Well, thank you guys so much. You said some very nice things. Um, it's It's been a great privilege to be able to teach this year, and it's it's kind of been a dream of mine for a long time. It might have something to do with a majority of my family has taught before, um, and most of my heroes have been teachers. Um, so it was really fun to be able to do it this year, and I never in a million years would have thought I would be doing it right now, but you would have told me a year ago that I would be, I probably would have thought you were crazy, but it has been a really good experience, and I can't imagine doing anything else. Um, just want to thank everyone for their support um, of me and all the people who gave me such good advice and helped me through this year, and also the way the school community has loved my family um, over the past 12 years has been really great. And Thank you. I'm going to miss you guys. All right, Miss Graver. I don't really like <laughs> that we're at this place, but um, Miss Graber came to us kind of last minute as well. Um, Miss Becker was not able to come back. She was planning to come back. And um, so we were looking for a secretary and um, last minute Miss Graber was willing to do it. And man, <laughs> it was a blessing straight, straight from God. Um, I just wanna thank you for how you have given your heart um, to your work, to us, um, the students, the parents, the staff team. Um, you've made my husband's job a lot easier. Um, and it has just been a true joy to work with you. Um, I know that Allegheny is very blessed <laughs> to have you coming. Um, just don't be a stranger. <laughs> Come on back. And I love you. I didn't know I was next. I just realized I made a mistake. I had a great speech in my head, and I didn't write it down. And I just went blank, so I'll just talk from the heart. But uh, I have really enjoyed working with you in athletics. Um, you're just the kind of person that makes it easy. Um, I would say a lot of what you do in athletics, uh, I didn't get to work with you every day like the rest of these folks did, but um, a lot of what you did was behind the scenes and didn't get a lot of attention. And um, so um, I just hope you you're, will be blessed for what you did. Um, you, you've been a gift to Foothills. There's so many things all of us could say about the way that you worked and, and what you did, but... Um, um, I do have one question, though. I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, do you ever get in a bad mood at all? <laughs> or like, maybe I should ask the ones that work with you. Maybe that. <laughs> She'd probably say tonight will be the first time if I don't shut up, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, you're going to leave a big hole here for us. But um, just as big as that hole is here for us, I think you're going to be even that and more of a blessing to the boys camp where you're going so thank you Rochelle thank you for all you've done for school you've served all of us here at school in a beautiful way as I started to think about the past five years that I have worked with you I began to make a mental list of all the things that you did on a day-to-day -day basis and I can't remember ever hearing you complain as Gabe mentioned you had a cheerful way about you 
that has a way of making the rest of us feel at home and okay. You have spent many hours behind the scenes making us teachers successful. Thank you for that. You have shone Jesus into our life with your servant heart, and we are better people for it. We are going to miss you, but we are excited as you start your new role at Gator Camp. We love you. This is one of my favorite quotes about vocation, and I thought about it as I was thinking about you, Rochelle. It says this, The church's approach to an intelligent carpenter is usually confined to exhorting him not to be drunk and disorderly in his leisure hours and to come to church on Sundays. But what the church should be telling him is this, that the very first demand that his religion makes upon him is that he should make good tables. And when I think about you, you're not a carpenter, you haven't made tables, but you have done your job very, very well. And I think what that means is that actually you've made the gospel look really good. And you've made God famous through your work here. Um, you make people better in the way that you serve um, and like Gabe said, somehow you managed to do it with a smile on your face. Um, and yeah, it's just been a real joy to, to work with you. And thank you for kind of modeling that, like what it means to, to really like live out the gospel through your career. So I'm, I'm really blessed to have worked with you. Well, Rochelle, from the board again, say thank you and um, you were just, you are really easy and good to work with. I know I worked with you on a personal level just with the uh, Jim Rental and changing the code for me and all those kinds of things. I appreciated working with you. You were always so organized. Um, well, it seemed like it to me. And uh, you are very efficient. Um, and I think the biggest thing that I saw many times is how well you communicated with people, communicated with the parents um, and all of that. And whenever you walked in the front office uh, to school, Rochelle was usually there and she would always greet you with, uh, with a smile. So you will be missed and um, just want to wish you God's blessing as you transition to Allegheny Camp. And like Laurie said, they're, they're uh, going to benefit from having you there. Thank you. Amen to what everybody else said. And when I think about when you came five years ago, uh, when I think back to 17, 18, uh, 19, those were some of um, the thinnest years for me where it felt just worked really, um, just didn't always know I was going to make it. And you were just a perfect, person and and um and just thank you 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 um you have a way of getting vision you don't need a ton of instructions you just need to see what the big picture is and then you go figure out how to do it and that was exactly um exactly what we needed and so thank you um that's always going to be a blessing and then we just had so much fun together too uh, here at school, and um, I love the level of profession, professionality you brought to brought to the job. But you're also just uh, you're incredibly gifted at just putting out fires too. Um, you're really good at that, and um, you've I've seen you grow so much, Rochelle. Just encourage, um, uh, you know, school provides some scary opportunities sometimes. <laughs> But just the way you've the way you've done that, and uh, I think the the biggest sign uh, of the job well done is is that your heart's been transformed. And um, so, just thank you. And I I know these students back here are are going to miss that uh, from you. And um, so, I'll give you a chance to say something if you'd like to. Okay. And then we want to give you a few things. I just want to say thank you to all of you. I have counted it a privilege to be here for the last five years. And yeah, it's been, it's been a growing experience for sure. Um, yeah, just looking back over the five years of 
you know, different changes and different added responsibilities and the things that I've learned to do and grown to love and the people that I've come to know through it all. So, yeah, thank you for your support. Um, I always felt like the parents were, you guys were very supportive and working through all the things, whether it was a last minute update or, yeah, you were, you came through for me when I needed you and I really appreciate that. So, yeah, thank you. So I didn't get you a plaque, but we got you something else. <laughs> uh, Rochelle Graver, Outstanding Service, 2017 to 2022. And on the sides, it says other things, too, so you can get it out if you want. We tried to list all the things she does on there, but we ran out of space. <laughs> Just want to remind you all to come back out again Monday night. We're going to have a farewell for Joe and Lori. Um, that's at 7 o'clock. And don't forget to RSVP to Rochelle. And I think the choir has one more song for you. Notice in your program is called Baba Yetu. It is. Um, it was brought to me in my um, Max Minor. Um, he. It's probably. It was a dream of his actually for the choir here at school to perform it, and I listened to it the first time. I was like, oh, seems like a lot. There's. It's. In, it's in Swahili, so of course it's a different language, and yeah, I brought it to the choir. They were excited about it, and they took it and learned it, and I'd say they succeeded in accomplishing that. So you'll hear that. Um, it is the Lord's Prayer. So um, you'll hear this one phrase repeated a lot, Baba Yetu. It's one that everybody's singing. It's our Father who art in heaven. Our Father, hallowed be thy name. And then there's a part where our soloist, Alex, is saying a lot of words that won't make a lot of sense. <laughs> but um, it's give us to stay our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive others who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one forever. And then there's this building moment where it's talking about his kingdom coming his will being done on earth as it is in heaven. So, yeah, that's how we're going to finish out the evening. Hope you enjoy.
from a walker, from a walker, who fike, who to Carlo, to Nia, to Nia, about five minutes, okay? Uh, and we'll be eating out there and at picnic tables and different places like that. Uh, and I guess